Hello again! I'm going to take another little trip down memory lane to the dark ages of pre-internet. No uh, way to buy EC comics, but to physically find them. So a lot of that happened at comic conventions, but also there were two places where my brother and I scored a lot of EC comics in the 80s and into the very early 90s. And the first of these was a place called Burke Books in Northern Virginia. And my first job when I was 16 was working at a McDonald's that was in the parking lot of this strip mall. And in the strip mall was this place, Burke Books. And um, they had a lot of used books and they had a lot of old comics. And as luck would have it, they occasionally got in ECs. And the first one I remember getting there was in 1985. And it was a weird fantasy number 22. And unfortunately, I don't have that same copy. I've since replaced it, but I don't have the copy I got then because also in the late 80s into the 90s, uh, my brother Josh and I decided to focus only on horror comics. And we traded that weird fantasy 22 for, I believe it was a Haunt of Fear number 10 from a fellow collector in Virginia. But uh, one of the earlier comics I remember getting, and this was in the days when we would buy anything with an EC emblem. And so it didn't matter what type of comic it was. If it was an EC and it was affordable, we would buy it. So at Burke Books, this was on the wall. I went in on my lunch break one time and I saw this. So I snapped it up and um, it came with a very nice surprise. This wasn't noted and I'm sure that they didn't know about it at the bookstore. But this copy of Incredible Science Fiction number 32, which was the first Incredible Science Fiction I had ever seen, once we got it home, we noticed that the Food for Thought splash panel was signed by Al Williamson. And the splash page of the Jack Davis story, Marked Man, signed by Jack Davis. So that was pretty exciting, and these were the first EC artist autographs that uh, Josh and I ever had. And uh, this was one that, uh, even with all the trades and things that were going on later, we never let this one go. And I'm so glad now to have Food for Thought, signed by Williamson, is very, very cool. Also at Burke Books, this one wasn't even on the wall. This was in the bins of comic books, and they actually had a section for EC Comics, and it was mostly East Coast reprints, but this original Vault of Horror number 15 was there. And my best friend Jeremy also wanted it, and he hid it in the wrong section. But I found it, and Josh and I bought it, and this was $15. My handy records indicate where and when we got all of these old ECs. So the owner of Burke Books was kind of an aging hippie dude, and he had a really long beard. And he noticed that Josh and I were always looking for ECs, so he started looking for them for us. And... uh he got our phone number and one time we got a phone call and he said that he had been at a show and he got a bunch of ECs. Did we want to come take a look at them? And we said yes. And uh, this was mid 80s sometime. Josh and I went down there together and um, it was all horror stuff because he specifically knew we wanted horror stuff. And that one day we got these five comics and I'll never forget the guy saying, now kids, I know this would be a lot of money, but if you want to pick out your favorites, I can hold on to them, whatever. Uh, we pooled our resources and we said we'll take them all. At the time, this Volta 4 22 was the most expensive EC we had ever bought. This was priced at $40. And I don't remember what kind of a deal he gave us for buying all of them, but that day we got Volta 4 22 and 31. And we got these three Haunt of Fears 13, 15, and my favorite horror cover of all time. Haunt of Fear number 17. And uh, it was so funny because Josh said that day he had a spine-tingling feeling when we were going to Burke Books that this comic would be one of them because this was the EC horror comic that he wanted the most. And he said he just knew it was going to be there. And uh, it was. So these are the very copies we bought that day. A couple more Burke Book purchases that were um, we bought separately. So one time Josh was there on his own and he picked up this Haunt of Fear number 22, and I distinctly remember reading this sitting at my desk in my room when I should have been doing my homework. But um, EC Comics were much more important than homework. So Josh bought this one, and then here's one that I bought, Haunt of Fear number 16. I walked in and this was on the wall, 
and it was priced at $25. It's a really nice copy and it was a no-brainer at the time. So this would have been around 1987, 88, because I remember I was old enough to drive and I was old enough to be going on dates and I happened to have a date the night I found this book. And um, the girl that I was supposed to be taking to the diner was working at her job, I was gonna pick her up, and so I stopped at Burke Books on the way and lo and behold, this book was new on the wall. And so um, without thinking, I bought it and then I went to, uh, not pick the girl up because I didn't have any money left for the date, but to tell her, hey, look what I got. I'm sorry I can't take you out tonight, but check it out. I figured who wouldn't understand that, and she didn't understand that. So we didn't date anymore, but I still have this comic. So Burke Books was a great place to buy ECs in the 80s, and in the early 90s, it was 1991, and me and my buddies went on a road trip to visit a friend of ours who was going to college in Pittsburgh, and we went to this place called Ides Entertainment. And um, we went there to buy records because it was a used record store. But uh, downstairs, I found that they had comic books and they had a huge pile of ECs. And the guy that was working there said, nobody's buying these. We could probably make you a deal. I didn't have a lot of money, but that first trip, and it was in spring of 91, I came home with Vault of Horror number 16 and 17 neither of which I had ever seen before. This was before the internet, and this was before Grant Geisman's books, and both of these covers were new to me. I was pretty excited to get these. And then I got Shock Suspense Stories 16 and 17, and I was ecstatic to have these because both of these had stories in the big book, and any comic that was featured in the big book was automatic grail item for me. So getting both of these the same day was really exciting. So they had a bunch more ECs, and I couldn't afford them all, but I vowed to return. So what I did was I worked all summer and I saved my money and I went back to Ides in Pittsburgh in the fall. And that was the most ECs I had ever bought at one time. I got Volta of Horror 13, Haunt of Fear 16, which is the second issue, Haunt of Fear number six, Shock Suspense Stories number one, which I knew was there. It was priced at $60, and I think it was the most expensive of any of the ECs that I got at Ides. And uh, this was one that Josh had to have. So he paid for this one, and I paid for the rest of them. Shock Suspense Stories number four. Tales from the Crypt 38 was the only crypt they had, but I was really excited because this was another cover that I was unfamiliar with at the time. Crime Suspense Stories number seven. And I got a lot of crime suspense stories there. They just had a lot of crime suspense stories. And it was a title that I didn't have many copies of. And so Josh and I greatly increased the crime suspense stories at Ides Entertainment. Here's number 10, 11, 12, and 13. Nice little run there. And then I also got 20 and 21 there at Ides in the fall of 91. So... Apart from comic conventions, I would say that Burke Books and Ides Entertainment were the two places that we got the most ECs in that pre-internet era. And uh, of course, eBay came along in the late 90s and uh, things changed a lot in collecting, but it was very exciting to find these comic books at little shops. So that's part two of my walk down memory lane, EC collecting with my little brother. But one more thing I wanna mention is that when I got all these ECs at Ides, I took them down to Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, where both my brother and my then girlfriend were going to college. And um, so my girlfriend at the time is now my wife because she did understand spending a lot of money on ECs and it's something she never discouraged. So find yourself a girl that loves EC comics, find yourself a guy that loves EC comics, and your life will be indescribably strange. Thanks for watching. I'll try to come up with some more ideas for videos, but that kind of covers the earliest days of EC collecting with my little brother, Josh. Thank you very much.